Hi. How you doing, champ? You like knives? Yeah. What the? What you got there? Let's take a closer look. Oh, a house payment. Very responsible. Good job. What do you say we do something crazy? Live on the edge a little bit. Go ahead and rip that house payment up. Yep. There you go. Now we need to do one more thing. Let's do fancy pants. Boom. Yeah, we could do that here. Let's look at some fancy cool knives that we can get instead of making that house payment. How's that sound? Yeah? All right. I just wanted to give you guys a quick sneak peek of uh, the knife that we're going to be looking at today. This is the Ferrum Forge Archbishop 2.0. Uh, some pretty cool knives that I got a chance to check out. And I'll share with you guys. So, let's uh, jump on in. How's it going, guys? Today we are checking out some uh, some nice knives from Ferrum Forge. This is the Archbishop 2.0. And this is the production version of the original. Um, normally well outside my wheelhouse uh, as far as price range and kind of in size a little bit but you know i wanted to wear my fancy pants and check out some uh, nicer knives so when the opportunity came to check these out i jumped on it big thanks to Ferrum forge for sending this out along in my last video i mentioned that this was um that i had the most expensive knife package i'd ever received and that's what this was uh collectively this represents more than my house payment which is kind of crazy that this is just sitting here so once again big thank you to those guys uh, what we're going to do is we're going to throw in a spec check, get the basic info on the knife, and then we're going to talk about the pros of the knife, the things it's doing well, the so-sos, things that are little nitpicks, kind of talking points, uh, not any deal breakers, but just the little tidbits, and then the oh no's, the potential deal breakers, things that's going to cause us to take a step back or you know talk about whether the knife is a purchase that we want to make. So here's our spec check to kick things off, and uh, let's get started. Here we go. Alright, now that we got the spec check out of the way, let's open one of these up real quick. Just kind of take a look at what we're working with. I will drop in a size comparison snapshot right here, just so you can kind of get a look at how big this knife is going to be. Uh, you're going to see that it is coming under the code 4 and right above the big the bug out. So kind of a medium-ish big knife. Nothing too crazy. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's talk about the pros of the knife. Um, these knives are uh, $275. So I was going to kind of hold, a, hold these knives up to a little bit of a higher standard, as I would expect anybody reviewing a uh, near $300 knife. And I got to say right off the bat, without, you know, if, if, if you're at this point in the video and you're tired of watching already, um, there are no oh no's on this knife and a couple nitpicks and a lot of pros. Uh, touching on some of the pros though, I want to start kind of from the front and then just work our way back. The blade is a nice blade. It's got a... Um, kind of an acid stone wash finish on there. Let me get in on it real quick. And that kind of goes with like just a matte, just kind of same finish that you got going on on here on the handle. This one is anodized blue, but it looks like it's a nice subdued knife that looks nice, but not too flashy. I kind of dig it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the blade is going to be M390, so nice blade steel. You do have a generous finger choil, a great finger choil, I, I might add. Um, you have this cutout here, which can be operated as an opening method, but there's a lot of load them up and flick them out. So this one is actually um, probably my favorite out of the three. When we first got the chance to check these out, I thought I was only checking out one and it was going to be this one. And then as I played around with them, um, this one became my favorite just then, how, how it's dialed in a little bit better. All of them are great, nothing to uh, complain about, but this one just seems to be a little bit better as you saw by that little bit of spidey flake. Just watch out. Anyway, so the blade is good. Working our way back, the action, let's drop it down. 
beautiful. Great action, great deployment. I'm very happy with how these knives operate. All of them are great. All of them are centered. You can see, let me just kind of flip the other ones open so, you know, I ain't gonna be a liar to you. There you go. All operating as they should be, all centered. Overall fit and finish is fantastic on these guys. Um, kind of moving back to these handles, you can see there are the three different variants. This milling is next level. I'm gonna get in on this for you as well. On all these knives, I couldn't find anything where they um, where they skipped out as far as milling and chamfering edges and getting everything as they should be. All the screws are set properly. The pocket clips, everything is done fantastically. One thing I do want to touch on is the only billboarding on here is M390 on the blade and the, the Ferrum Forge logo right here. And that's great. I love that. The aesthetics are great on these. I guess we can kind of wrap into that. I'm really digging the aesthetics of the knives, how you do have three different options to look at. Uh, you have these two if you want something a little fancier or if you're more of a traditional. I think this would do, this would keep you pretty happy. Uh, this is going to be under the same as these, just overall fit and finish, just overall execution is, is awesome. And then going into some of the other aesthetics and the other choices that they made, I'm really digging the backspacer here. This is a really nice touch. Um, if these were mine, I'd probably do some swapping of some backspacers and some pocket clips. But the backspacer is nice. I really dig it. The pocket clip is not going to be the deepest carry. I'll slide a clip of it going in and out of the pocket in here. You can see it doesn't carry very deep, but... You know, if I got a $300 knife, I want a little bit poking out of the pocket so someone can say, hey, is that a pocket knife? And I can pull it out and be like, why, yes, it is. Cha-cha, look at that bad boy. And then tell them it's $300 and watch their jaw drop to the floor. It's not really a pro. I'm just bringing it up here now so you guys can see what we're working with on these pocket clips. All right, so let's kind of go back up and around. Something I did miss touching on on the blade was the jimping here on the back. That was a nightmare to focus on. But you can see it's got this big open jimping. And generally I'm not a fan of big open jimping because it's never done right. Usually they round it off too much so you're not getting any purchase or it's so rough and rugged that it's gonna tear you up. But you can see they chamfer the outside edges so you're not worrying about too much there. And the top is aggressive, but not super, super aggressive. It's To me, it's just right. So when you lock in on that finger choil and you get your hand on the, the handle, which these handles are all ergonomic, um, by the way. The ergonomics are great. So you get in on the finger choil, you get your hand on there and you lock in on that jimping. This is one very secure blade in hand. So one nice thing about having three to look at is you've got three different examples. As I stated, the action is all is great on all of them. The detent is just a hair softer on this one, which is what I prefer. So that one kind of tends to be my favorite. But you know, when you look at things like lockup on all these knives, they're all generally about the same. Let me show you the lockup real quick. You're coming in at about, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, off camera it's looking at about 30 percent that doesn't quite look like it's translating on camera but it is so these are all about that like 25 30 percent they all got the uh hardened steel insert so that's a great thing one other thing i wanted to throw in there was i did decide to do a little bit of edge retention test i took this uh rock from the yard and i just kind of ground it up and down the side of the blade guys i'm kidding really you guys are sick and twisted you wanted to see that Shame on you. I'm not going to do that with somebody else's knife. All right, let's 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 get back to some of the actual talking points of the knife. Let's get into some so-sos. Uh, not a lot to pick on here. Uh, one of the things is uh, they are all metal construction, so you are coming in a little bit heavier. So if you're someone who worries about the ounces or you like your um, lighter knives, you, you might be put off a little bit. It's uh, off the top of my head. It's four point... I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. I don't wanna I don't wanna look like a jackass in front of the whole world. So that's what you're looking at right there, that number, and um, not bad. Um, not the lightest knife in the world, but not super heavy. For all metal construction, I'm cool with that. We're we're good on that. But it is a talking point. Some people do like their lighter knives. Uh, the next thing is probably just the it's probably my biggest little thing that I, I think that most people would universally agree on. But I might be wrong, so that's why it's gonna be just a so-so. Got a couple other knives off screen that kind of bring this point home. As far as the design on these, they're great. I like the, all the little details. Everything ties together very nicely. I like the different options. There's only one thing looking at this knife that says to me, this might not be a $275 knife. I'll let you guys take a second to look at it and see if you can figure it out. Any, t any guesses? It's going to be that right there. 
um, the pivot screws and the pivot hardware, they don't really scream, you know, to me like, hey, I'm, I'm going to almost cost you $300. Uh, they look like they could just be standard hardware pivot screws. You know, they're, they're rounded and they're not, you know, you can see there's a little bit of space right there at the end. They don't look like anything that was, um, was tailored specifically for this knife. And I'll pull out another one so you guys can see some of the examples I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's not as it's not as gaudy as that on the Code 4, but look what they did on the other side of the Code 4. They got this nice, flush, flat. I think that looks great. If my camera would focus, you guys could see what I'm talking about. So, you know, what, what looks better to you? Um, that one does. So if, even if they didn't want to go that route, here's a, uh, another knife that I have. This was a little custom job that Jimmy Slash just uh, finished up to me, so big shout out to him and thank you. It's the Boker Titanium Blues, and you can see they went a little extra on their pivot screw. Now, maybe you don't have to go a little ex that much extra on your screw, but I think dressing that up a little bit would be an appropriate thing for a uh, $275 knife. Here's the Tucson, and you can see they just went and did something a little bit different. So I think that would have been a nice touch um, to pull away from something that looks like it could just be a standard pivot screw on any knife. That's probably my biggest, like, you know, so-so of this whole thing. And then the other thing is the price of $275, well outside my price range, but that's that's subjective. You know, a lot of people are shopping in that market. So I'm not going to hold that against the knife that there's a lot of milling, there's a lot of materials and time that go into these. So I can, I can respect that. Other than that, guys, I don't have any issues. I do want to take a second to kind of take a break from this and just talk to you guys for a moment. I'm going to pull, put up a poll question. I like getting your guys' feedback. What price range are you guys generally shopping knives? For me, I know it's like 50 to 120, give or take 20 bucks. That's generally my comfort zone on shopping for knives. So I'm just curious to see what you guys are shopping. I'll put a couple of options in there and you guys can pick and let me know what your preferences are. All right guys, so where does that leave us? Do I like it, love it, or leave it? Uh, honestly, I love it. I think it's executed great. Uh, the fit and finish is phenomenal. Everything on these knives is is next level. Is is warranting of that $275 price range. Is that somewhere that I'm shopping for knives? Absolutely not. But if you're someone who is in that price range, in that market, that these are the kind of knives you guys are looking at, I think you would be very happy with this. Uh, Fair and Forge knows what they're doing with knives. We knows what they're doing with knives. They came together to make this nice little knife baby for you. So I think you should uh, check one out if that's something you're interested in. If I had that much money to spend on one knife, I could recommend this knife as, uh, as as a candidate. I think they did a great job. So big thanks to them for sending these along and letting me check something out that it's not um, that I wouldn't normally check out. There you go, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them down in the comments below. Um, I look forward to your guys' interactions. Got some budget stuff I'm working on that's coming out soon. So stay tuned. As always, guys, have a good one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. little hesitation. That was really repetitive. We'll see you next time. Man, that wrap up sucked. Normally I'm not gonna be... The other one was better.